Welcome back everyone to Pitch the Podium and this particular week the Formula 1 circus moves from Austria to Hungary for the first ever Hungarian Grand Prix of this season. Now, we've had a double header in the Formula 1 season so far and Kunal, this Hungarian Grand Prix that we're going to have promises to be quite an entertaining one because lots of teams are coming up with it, big upgrades and it's a track where certain teams have a big advantage but certain teams don't. So, what do we have in store for the Hungarian Grand Prix and how do you think this is going to pan out? I think it's going to be another really exciting weekend. You know, the fact that it's a triple header only makes things more fun. You know, like Lewis Hamilton said, uh, you know, when he won in uh, won the Styrian Grand Prix, that you know he would he can keep doing back to back races. Uh, you know, all all through the year. I think that holds true for you and me as well. We can keep doing back to back videos as it goes. But you know, on a more serious note, triple header, great. Uh, you know, it's going to be a hot and uh, Humid Budapest, so it'll be interesting to see how drivers are able to cope with the the physical challenges as well. Not that they can't, but it's just going to be something that's going to be an additional factor, especially because of the long break and suddenly you are into a triple header and and the likes. Also interesting to see how you know team members are going to cope with uh, you know with the with the pressures that a triple header bring in. Because let's remember, for the drivers, it's just getting into the car, driving and parking it. But for team members, there's constant work literally through each day of the week leading up to a Grand Prix weekend. But uh, that's not about it. I know you and I have made a list of five things, uh, you know, that we should look forward to. So you want to start by reading out the five things that, you know, our viewers can uh, expect uh, this weekend? Absolutely. There are quite a few things to watch out for, for this Hungarian Grand Prix to expect. And it's a circuit that's very mentally challenging. But there are quite a few challenges surrounding the world of Formula 1 at this stage as well. And the five of our topics have a lot to do with the political scenario of Formula 1 and also what happens on the track. So firstly, we begin by speaking about Ferrari and Mattia Benotto. All the upgrades are bound to be coming in for the Hungarian GP weekend. And they didn't even have a press conference in Austria. So we're going to have a quick word about that. We're going to have a word about the, pros, uh, the protest I'm sorry, that Renault have made on Racing Point. And the interesting thing is, and Racing Point and Renault are going to be in the same press conference together. I think that's going to be sparks flying over there. And then, of course, we move on to speaking about the form factor for all the drivers and especially the battle at the very top. And we have to move on to speak about the pecking order with all the teams. And then the favourite part, I think, of every single person watching Formula 1 this year, the midfield. So, Kunal, let's get down to the very core of it. It's, we have to speak about Ferrari. Now, again, most popular and most iconic team in the history of Formula 1. They get paid major history bonuses and everyone says that Formula 1 is nothing without Ferrari and this season there's a genuine fear that Ferrari may not really be at the top of their game they may not really be able to compete but there are positive signs it seems for the Hungarian GP yeah well you know they've accelerated their upgrades for Hungary they brought it to Styria I assume that you know they would have had lots of data uh, picked up from at least the free practice sessions uh, you know, and they, they would have probably understood how to make their upgrades work better. I think the big loss from, from Ferrari's uh, double DNF, especially literally, you know, in the first few laps of the race was that they could have picked up more data on how their upgrades are performing in a race situation and the like. So they've literally been, you know, you know, put on the back foot, not just in terms of constructors championship points, but even in terms of just gathering more data to sort of understand their package and make it better. But the most interesting part is going to be that, uh, you know, this is going to be the first time Ferrari are going to be facing the press after their double DNF, um, you know, in, in Austria. And it, it will be interesting to hear what the teams have to say, uh, what the drivers have to say and the likes. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty much looking forward to it because, you know, there, there weren't direct blame games that were made, especially by the team, even though Charles was, you know, mature enough to accept that it was his mistake. But definitely, Ferrari's press conferences are going to be extremely headline-worthy. So, look out for those guys. Absolutely. I mean, they're a team that often send out cryptic messages. But this one, when they're going to be in the press conference, the official one, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see just what they say about the whole scenario and how they're planning to go forward. But, Kunal, we also have to speak about another couple of people who will be there at the press conference. So, Otmar now. And Cyril Abitbul. Now, we know for a fact that Cyril Abitbul is a man never shy, who, shy, who never shies away, I'm sorry, from a controversy. We saw him at the centerpiece of Drive to Survive and here we are again now that Renault has made a protest on Racing Point. So, we'll discuss the whole matter about Racing Point apparently copying Mercedes' car in a different video. But about the press conference, Kunal, how do you think that's going to go down? Because we know that Cyril is not a man of light words. He, he, he can be pretty feisty at times. 
he can be so and i am looking forward to the two team bosses uh sitting down in front of the world media and addressing questions i'm sure both teams believe that they're right in in their approach and in their uh, in their reasons to protest or you know defend their protest but uh, it's it's going to be an interesting uh, you know position that formula 1 ends up taking as a sport when it comes to customer teams and how to sort of approach this problem and uh, personally speaking I, i you know i'm loving the fact that racing point is as quick as they are because it's just making for so much more interesting uh, you know racing uh, uh, you know on tracks and uh, you know that said it of course needs to be within the the existing regulations and the law and you know in in some way i'm sure cyril and otmar you know otmar being my former boss at force india they'll also be pleased that you know this is a very highly controlled media environment with, with you know questions <laughs> being taken on Thank zoom goodness. and and email and the likes but uh, overall i think the midfield uh, battle is going to be as interesting as the battle between red bull and mercedes like we saw you know red bull throwing multiple protests at mercedes you know in the first round so it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's all up for the fourth place in in the constructors championship and i absolutely understand why reno probably want to get some more clarification uh, you know with regards to the legality of racing points car come on it's not a clarification is it? It, it they're just trying to outlaw the car but whatever it is gamesmanship is back after a long time and thank goodness it is and it just adds a different element into the world of formula 1 and I think when all this straight away leads us to our next discussion point which has to be the midfield because normally when you come into a formula 1 season you focus on the top teams you focus on the battle for the championship between a hamilton and hamiltons and a vettels and a verstappens but this year at least in the first couple of grand prix which happens to be at least for now the 1/5th of the opening season it i think it's just delivered far more than we all expected it to i mean we knew for a fact that mclaren renault and racing point would be close but the kind of action that they have provided us so far it's been incredible so hungary again it's a small track tight track it, it's one with a lot of medium paced corners and some slow ones as well and it's not it's a very mentally challenging circuit on the driver's perspective so in terms of the teams how do you expect things to pan out in in terms of the performance you know in firstly we we need to state this up front and this is data that you and i you know discussed before recording the video so i probably think Ferrari will be leading the midfield battle. Okay, we've seen them relegated to the <laughs> That's midfield. That's a bold statement. Yeah, but I also I'm get... sure their fans won't like it. I'm sure <laughs> their fans would like them being called as a part of Formula 1.5. Yeah, so you know, for all Ferrari fans who are disappointed with their team's performance, I think Hungary might just be that one circuit which aids the the performance of the SF 1000. and i say this because you know data from the two austrian grand prix showed that ferrari were actually really quick in the medium to low speed corners it's something that even lando norris ended up saying but i'm not making my basis you know on on lando's statement uh, i i happen to check the data that came out uh, you know by formula 1 and uh, you know with just an 800 meters straight all the loss that you know ferrari probably have on the long straights given the the issues around their power units uh you know they, that probably gets a little stunted so i would assume that you know ferrari will be uh you know hopefully breaking out from the midfield battle and challenging you know mercedes and and red bull racing uh, for top honors in on sunday of course it's it's a very ambitious statement but i'll put it this way that more hungary than any other circuit on the calendar at least at yeah. this moment is where ferrari could have their chance Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the one race that comes to mind is the 2017 Hungarian Grand Prix, where the McLaren Honda, with that terrible—I mean, I, I dare say this—but a terrible power unit, Fernando Alonso still dragged them up to a P5 finish. And I think Hungary is one of those very few tracks where it can actually do that with a rather ailing power unit. So, keeping this in mind, I think even Alfa Romeo could be somewhere near the top, or perhaps even Haas, because they, we know they've got a good chassis. I think the power unit has compromised them quite a bit. But the upper midfield canal—that's where the whole debate is. people have just been have just not been getting enough of the whole battle between racing point reno and mclaren and rightfully so it's been so entertaining so how do you think things will pan out between these three guys and who of them will be the strongest because racing point we know traditionally they've been a team that's dominated on the streets but will they have the same base advantage at a tight and twisty circuit like hungary you know it's anybody's guess to be honest you know uh, at the end of the day we saw that in austria all McLaren really needed were the last few laps to go make their magic work okay 
Uh, that said, uh, you know, at least at the second race in Austria, it was Checo Perez who was the quickest of all the midfield drivers. So in Hungary, I'll just be extremely pleased if the same battle continues to exist, you know, yeah, and, and then it just gives us a, a lot more entertainment than, you know, the ones that we've been missing at the front of the field. So I get this feeling that it's, it's really tough to probably make a guess. And uh, like I said, you know, my guess would be that Ferrari might just have a little bit more of an edge over these, you know, top three of the midfield uh, teams. And uh, my money is probably on Racing Point to probably just pull out a little bit more because, you know, given the, the, the design philosophy they've taken, they probably should be able to extract a lot more pace, uh, you know, in the medium and low speed corners in, in uh, Hungary. Yeah, absolutely. And let's just move up a little bit higher on the order because we normally expect Ferrari to be fighting out with these two teams and these two teams are Mercedes and Red Bull. We know for a fact that last year's Hungarian Grand Prix, an absolute classic. Lewis Hamilton was just coming in from the back, was leading the race when they actually made him to go for a rather bold strategy call and Verstappen then assumed control. But the way Hamilton fought back in the final stages of the race, with an, with an outrageous strategy that Hamilton thought wouldn't work, I think that is one amazing battle that we've got on the cards. Red Bull and Mercedes. Again, Mercedes seem to have the edge, but we don't know what could happen at a circuit like Hungary. And Verstappen, we all know for a fact that in this particular circuit, he's an absolute beast. Absolutely. I think I'm looking forward to Max Verstappen and what he's able to do to pull things out of the bag once again, you know, against the Mercedes cars. That said, you know, you know, Lewis is a brilliant driver. He's hit top form last weekend again. Not to say that he wasn't in top form, in, you know, in race one. Absolutely. He had penalties, uh, you, know, so, you know, around him. But uh, even Valtteri Bottas, you know, he's still leading the driver's championship. I'm pretty sure that he wants to deliver, you know, another stellar weekend to keep sure that, uh, to, to keep his lead in the driver's championship. So, in, in the top three battle, you know, pretty much all three drivers will be raring to go. I would love to see a Botas, uh, you know, pull off a blinder one more time because you know each time he does it, it's just so it's so smooth, it's so sublime that it's it's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's pretty Nordic, you know, in his own ways. He just do his <laughs> things, and he's suddenly you know yeah. the driver out on top. But there's another driver, you know, back in uh, at the back of the grid who I'm excited to track. You know, it's George Russell because uh, again, Hungary being a That's driver's so circuit, you know, we saw what George could do in. Uh, in uh, you know the Styrian Grand Prix qualifying on, in the wet conditions, so even if you know George Russell doesn't sort of get out of Q1, you know in case it's a dry uh, session, it would still be interesting to see how he's able to sort of deliver a good lap and see what his gap to the other teams and Nicolas Latifi is going to be. So that's another driver I would definitely look out for. Indeed, that's going to be so much fun to watch. And apart from George Russell as well, even just having a look at what Esteban Ocon can do this weekend. Or perhaps someone like Antonio Giovinazzi, because Ocon has been out for quite a while. This is a proper driver's track where your engine doesn't really matter as much. And we know that Renault has a bit of an ailing power unit. So, what can he do over here? That's going to be interesting to watch. What can Giovinazzi do? Because Alfa Romeo, again, having the same Ferrari power unit issue, we wrote an article on Pitch the Podium explaining what the problem was. And maybe this could be one circuit where they could actually have a strong goal. But, Kunal, just before we wrap up this particular video, but we are doing a thing here at Pitch the Podium where we actually predict the podium for each race before the qualifying. So what is your top three pick and who do you think is going to be, not, not on the podium as such, but on, on the virtual podium, receiving the trophies from the robotic machines that we've got here delivering <laughs> the trophies now? I think it's going to be the two Mercedes drivers and it's going to be, it's hard to not pick back which step in to be also there on the podium. So we could, you know, very well see the same podium, podium trio that we saw last weekend. But that's literally who they are because they are the drivers maximizing the package, you Indeed. know, as we speak. And uh, I, I'd love to see what the Ferraris are able to do as well. And if, they have, if they're going to have an error-free weekend because they really need one. What Absolutely. about you? What are your predictions? Uh, I'm going to make it a bit spicy and add a little bit of chili into it. So I'm going to say that Carlos Sainz is going to be in the podium this time. I have a strong feeling that McLaren are on the up. They're taking all the momentum and I think they are going to be in for a good result. So maybe top five. I mean, top five, I think that's going to be a real possibility. I'm betting on a podium though as well. And apart from that, I think it's really hard to look past the Mercedes drivers. It's, but, but that's the fun of it, Kunal. I mean, we at this stage genuinely have no clue about which team really is second. Okay. 
the battle for P1, yeah, let's keep that aside for a bit. But we don't know, apart of in the battle between Red Bull, Ferrari, Racing Point, let's say even McLaren at this stage, who really is the top team. And I think that's what Formula 1 is all about at the end. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm happy with the limited unpredictability we have. I mean, you know, like we said... Yeah, it shouldn't just, be like Formula E, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm happy with the limited, you know, racing that we get. And when I say racing, isn't, of course, we get lots of racing with triple headers and the likes. But, uh, you know, we know that it's going to be racing point versus, say, Alexander Albin. Could that, you know, repeat? Like, the, the what the Ferrari drivers could end up doing or what it's going to be between racing point, uh, McLaren and Renault and the likes. So, you know, there, there are battles. You just have to know which ones to follow. And that's mm. why, you know, we are happy to list them out for you on the Pits to Podium channel. Indeed. Once again, folks, thank you so much for watching this video and see you after the Hungarian Grand Prix where we discuss and dissect this entire race. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Kunal. Thanks, Samuel. Bye-bye.